will remain right there. Amen. That is in their hearts. Amen. So in John chapter 14 and verse 1, Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. I love that. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And in verse 2 he said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, it's good news, amen, and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way, you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. And how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, truth, and life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, I just want to thank you for your word. It is precious. It is light, oh God. It penetrates, oh God, and remove dark situations out of our lives, oh God. Where there is no way, there is a way that seemeth, oh God, right unto man. But in the end, there is death, Lord. And we pray, oh God, that we will follow the way, the truth, and the light. So that our lives, praise God, will be strengthened as a result of the precious word that you have made available to us, Lord. For we know, God, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it is by your spirit. I ask the Holy Spirit to help me to exhort upon this word. Pray that so it will be a blessing to your people, Lord. And it will help them, it will nurture them, it will enable them, praise God, to be mature, taking them to their next level of relationship with you, Lord. Have your way, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Praise God. Self-pity is not good. Amen. It makes you feel depressed. It makes you feel down. Amen. Praise God. It makes you feel as if you want to give up. Nobody cares for you. Amen. But uh, you all remember that Jesus said, I will never leave you. And I will never forsake you. Whether you are in a crisis or out of a crisis, Jesus is always available. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. He's always. That's why he is omnipresent. Amen. He is everywhere at the same time. Amen. And what a promise we should hold on to. I will never leave you. Amen. Praise God. In your weakest moments, amen, he said, I, I'm still there with you. In good times, I'm still here with you. Amen. Friends and family, amen, they wouldn't be there all the time. Amen. But I guarantee you, Jesus will always be there with us. That's why he told his disciples, amen, let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Now, the word, these words from Jesus is comforting to his disciples. They're comforting and they are encouraging. Let not your heart be troubled. Now, Jesus used the word let to indicate that we must not allow or permit our hearts, amen, to be troubled by worry, concern, anxiety, uneasiness, and being fearful. That's what worry does. Amen. It makes a small situation look big. Makes it look like it becomes like a mountain. That's why when we're facing 
situations in our lives that seems to be like a mountain, it is important for us to open up our mouth and speak to that mountain. That's why Jesus said, you shall have what you say. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You shall have what you say. If you say, praise God, that um, I'm an overcomer, amen, the reality will step in. If you say that I am defeated, the reality will step in also. Amen. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Amen. So the cure for a troubled heart is to trust in Jesus with all of your heart. Amen. To trust in Jesus with all of your heart. That's what the psalmist says. Trust in the Lord, not in yourself. Not in somebody else. Amen. But trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And then he said, lean not to your own understanding. The reason why God don't want his children to lean to their own understanding because our own understanding is what gets us into trouble. Amen. So we need to trust, amen, praise God, in the word which gives us, amen, praise God, a correct understanding, amen, of what life really is. Amen, praise God. If you're going through some things in life, amen, the word of God is the antidote. The word of God has the answer. If you feel depressed, go to the word of God. Amen. If you feel down, if you feel, if you hit rock bottom in life, if you feel oppressed, if you feel rejected, if you feel no one cares for you, amen, open up the good book, amen, and you'll begin to see, amen, praise God, your situation clear as crystal, amen, and I guarantee you, praise God, the word will solve that problem. Amen, praise God. So the cure for a troubled heart is to trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And remember, church, whenever the Bible talks about the heart, it's not a reference to the physical organ. Because you can't trust, amen, praise God, in the Lord with the physical organ, amen? Because the Word of God tells us, amen, for the natural man receive not the things of the Spirit of God. Why? Because the natural man is not born again. The natural man, praise God, he faces the material world through his five senses. And as long as he is focusing on the things of the world, amen, there is no way that he can trust in the Lord. Sure. Amen. Praise God. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. When the Bible talk about the heart, it's a reference to the inward man. Amen. The spirit man, praise God. Amen. That is what you call an inward intuition. Praise God. You have to trust in God. Amen. Praise God. It is a wholehearted commitment. Amen. Praise God. And that is a problem with so many people today. They're trying to trust in the Lord based upon their five senses. Amen. And it isn't going to work. Amen. He said, now when you trust in the Lord with all of your heart, amen, I guarantee your heart will be at rest. I said, your heart will be at rest when you trust in him with all of your heart. Amen? Because you have to remember, praise God, that's where the problem is. That's why Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. Amen? Your words, amen, will make you a failure or your words will make you a widow. That's why it's very important for us, amen, in a, in a crisis, amen, always speak the word of God. Amen. Don't depend on your IQ. Don't depend on your five senses. Amen. To get you out of this situation. To get you out of the mess. Amen. Speak to God in your quiet. And there's nothing wrong um, when you ask God questions. There's nothing wrong with that. He's your father. But like I was saying last week, amen. Praise God. You have to approach him and ask him, praise God, and with a lot of respect. With humility. Amen. Praise God. Uh, you're pleading with him. Amen. Hallelujah. In Psalms 46 and verse 1 says, God is my rep. Always use the word of God when you're in a crisis, in a situation. This is what the psalmist says. God is my refuge and strength. Amen. And a very present help in trouble. 
a very present help in trouble. Now, first of all, refuge, amen, indicate shelter from danger. Amen. And God is our security when, praise God, we feel insecure. Amen. Praise God. Now, strength, amen, refers, amen, to the power of God in us to help us, amen, overcome the storms in life. To overcome obstacles in life. Barriers and difficulties in our lives. That's one of the reasons why the Apostle Paul told the Ephesian church, amen, he said, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. B is in the present tense. He said, be strong in the Lord. He didn't say, amen, brethren, amen, try to be strong. It's good to make an effort, but then when you use the word of God as it is, it's important to use the word of God just as it is, amen? He said, be strong. So now, when you approach God, amen, praise God, you have to use the word as it is that says, Lord, I am strong in you. <laughs> I'm not going to make an effort to be strong in you. I'm not going to try to be strong in you. But God, I'm using the word of God just as it's written. I am strong in you. Amen. Praise God. And in the power of his might. The power of his might is the Holy Spirit. Amen. He said, and a very present help in trouble. That means God is always available to help us at any time. Amen, Amen God. God is not limited. Amen. Praise God. It is God's desire, church, to be near us, amen, and help us in the time of insecurity. How many of you feel that way at times? You feel insecure, amen? God will help us in the times of adversities. God will help us in the times of uncertainty, amen, praise God. Whenever, praise God, whenever you feel, amen, insecure and uncertain, Go to the word of God. Amen. Go to the word of God. Amen. And when you finish reading, praise God, sometimes as soon as you open up the Bible, praise God, the answer is right there. It happens so many times. Amen. amen. Praise God. As soon as I open up, amen, the answer is there. And then I begin to focus. Okay, God, this is what you are uh, speaking to me about. And I'm going to meditate on these verses. Amen. Praise God. And I know it will help me. I know that uh, this particular verse, amen, it is getting to the root, amen, cause of the situation. That's what the word of God does. It gets to the root. Amen. Praise God. But always remember, church, always remember, amen, problems, praise God, when one is solved, another will present itself. Amen. Praise God. When one is solved, another present itself. Amen. And that's why you cannot let your guards down. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The Bible says be sober and be vigilant because the devil don't rest. Yes. Amen. Be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, that's how the word of God put it, your adversary, your adversary is your opponent, your foes, one who's against you. And you do have enemies. All of us in here, we do have enemies and we don't even know. We're not even aware of it. Amen. We have the danger, uh, the most dangerous enemy is the unseen forces of darkness. And we do have human enemies and we're not even aware of it. Amen. That's why you have to get the spirit of discernment. Amen. Praise God. And when you discern, praise God, the human enemies, it is your responsibility now to go and pray for them. That is the easiest way, amen, to love your enemies. That's why Jesus said, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use your curse. As long as you're born again, amen, praise God, it is possible. Amen, and not impossible. Amen? Hallelujah. Now in verse 2, Jesus said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. Now this clearly points, amen, to heaven. Now, heaven is a God eternal home, amen, with many dwelling places. Amen. Where all the faithful 
believers, amen, who die in Christ, amen, will be transformed. Amen. amen. Praise God. And where their souls, amen, will be active, amen, and uh, very close to God. How many of you know when you see, when you have been raptured, praise God, the Bible says to be absent from the body, to be absent from this body, amen, praise God, is to be present with the Lord. Amen. To be absent from this body, amen. What is absent from the body? Spirit. It's absent from the body. Where the soul is absent from this body. That's one of the reasons why, amen, the most beautiful part of a human being is what is on the inside of them. Amen. Not on the outside. Amen. Not on who be deceived by the outside. Amen. amen. Praise the inside brother. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. That's the most beautiful part. That's what God looks at. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. You got to understand something with this flesh. Amen. Praise God. It will be destroyed. It is, it will perish. It is mortal. It is not immortal. Amen. Praise God. It is getting older. No matter how you try to fix it up. No matter how you try to correct God. Brother, it's still getting, it's still getting old. That's nature. Amen. But your spirit will get old. Oh my God. Your spirit doesn't get old. Amen. It's what is on the outside, that's what get old. Amen. Praise God. What is on the outside feel a lot of pain. Amen. Praise God. We misery, all of these things. The things that we see is temporal. But the things that we do not see is eternal. Personalize it. This flesh that we see every day is temporal. But what is on the inside is eternal. That's why David said, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Hallelujah, praise God. So don't be carried away, praise God, with the external. Uh -huh. Don't focus so much on that. But focus. The beauty of a woman, praise God, is within her. Amen? Praise God. Are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. It's not your facial expression. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's good to ask God to pray and ask God for a husband. It's good to pray and ask God, amen, for a wife. But something you pray and ask God for a wife, you may not like what he gives to you. <laughs> amen. I, it happens, brother. You pray and ask God, amen. God give me a wife, amen. Now when God give your wife witching, that is the right person, amen. But then you know, Wait a minute, amen. She ain't got no teeth in your mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. But she's the right person. You see, you see something, you know? God said, you, you, you ask me, and I give you a wife. Amen. Now I give you a wife. What, what more can I do for you? <laughs> Hallelujah. That's where the wisdom comes in. Amen. <laughs> Remember God has given to us. Amen. Praise God. The priceless gift of freedom to make a choice. And you respect the decision that we make. But to praise God, make sure you make the right decision. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Now, as I said, amen. He said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. This clearly points to heaven. Amen. Now, praise God. So, the soul, amen, will no doubt be active in the presence of the Lord. Amen? Because heaven is a place, heaven is a noisy place. I said heaven is a noisy place. God wraps you there right now, you're going to hear a lot of noise. Because it's just worship. It's saturated with worship. Amen. And sometimes, you know, people come to church and they say, you, oh, they make too much of noise of these things. Well, you would like to go to heaven because you're going to hear a lot of noise. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, um, in heaven, amen, we will be active. Yes. We'll be worshiping the Lord. Yes. We'll be um, serving him. We continue to be, you know, we not be, you know, our lives will not lie there dormant, amen? amen. 
but we'll be active. We'll be participating in the things of God. I understand that when people, they were, um, God gave them a rapture experience, amen, and this is so true, when God gave them a rapture experience, the reason why he allowed them, praise God, to see, amen, the portals of heaven, the reason why he allowed them to see hell, amen, is because there are many people in this world that don't believe in heaven and don't believe in hell. Amen. So the reason why you allow them to see it is because, amen, you will make sure they return, amen, and let them know that these two places is reality. Yes. Thank you, amen. Praise God. But when they get there, they don't want to come back. <laughs> they don't want to come back. Amen. Praise God. Amen. They don't want to return back to earth. Amen. Praise God. So just to show, amen. He said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. Amen. Now, anyone who have been deprived of a home, amen, even for a short time, amen, will understand the comforting words, amen, praise God, that Jesus gave to his disciples, amen. Amen. Praise God. In my father's house, there are many mansions. Amen. Praise God. So, his disciples, amen, praise God, draw words, amen, praise God, amen, from, from, from the way he speak to them, amen, praise God. They were attracted to him because Jesus always speak life into the lives of people, amen. He's not the author of death, but he's the author of life. Whenever Jesus opened up his mouth to speak, amen, praise God, he is speaking life, amen, praise God, so that you can receive, amen, praise God. And that life is really eternal life. Amen. That's why he said, the words that I have spoken to you, they are spirit and they are life. Amen. When you read the word of God, amen, and you appropriate the word of God by faith, amen, and you reveal the word, amen, to someone, amen, Praise God. You're speaking life into their lives, amen, so that they can receive life. That's what you're receiving right now. Remember the word of God is life. Amen. It's not death. Amen. amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, to make their joy complete, Jesus told his disciples, I will to prepare a place for you. Amen. Amen. Now, Jesus made this statement while he was on earth, amen? But when he ascended up into heaven, amen, and seated at the right hand of the Father, he had already made that preparation. The Bible says God knows all those who belong to him. That's one of the reasons why when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, I, I sometimes it's good to renew, amen, praise God, uh, your covenant relationship with him. Amen. Amen. What I mean is that, um, you know, there, there are times when you, you should say, Lord, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. That is, you're renewing your covenant relationship with him. Sometimes we forget where God brought us from. Uh -huh. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> so, when you, sometimes we need to be reminded Amen. Praise God. We need to be reminded, amen, what God did for us. Amen. And sometimes in order for us, in order for him to get our attention, he will allow some situations in our lives. Yes. I have discovered, amen, what, you know, what brings me closer to God. Do you know what brings me closer to God? It's trials. Mm -hmm. It's trials. Is there is something about trials. That's why the Bible says what the devil meant for evil, God meant for good. Sometimes trials, it, 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 it makes you bend your knees, amen, praise God, yes. with tears in your eyes. Yes. You, amen, praise And it's good, amen. It shows, a praise God, the, the brokenness, amen, praise God, amen. A lot of praise God, I need more of you. Amen, praise God. It's like I was sharing with you last week when, praise God, uh, King Ezekiel, when God uh, told the prophet uh, Isaiah, amen, praise God, to go and tell King Ezekiel to set his house in order, for he shall 
die, amen, and not live. And what King Ezekiah did, he turned his face, as a matter of fact, to avoid that sentence, amen, he turned his face towards the wall, amen, and he prayed. Amen. Now you have to understand, praise God, and I think uh, Sister Johnson came to me and she, she said something she couldn't understand, amen. The house wasn't a physical house. When God told, amen, Ezekiel, amen, put your house in order, it wasn't a physical house that meant construct, amen, or built, amen, but the house that God was talking about was Ezekiel bought. God was telling the king, listen, get rid of those undesirable things in your life that is responsible for your sickness. Amen, praise God, hallelujah. And in order for Ezekiel, Ezekiel fixed the problem when he turned his face towards the wall and prayed. And when he finished praying, God told the prophet Isaiah, go and tell King Ezekiel, I've seen your tears, I've heard your prayer, Amen. and I will have 15 more years. God, hallelujah. So, and so what God is saying, amen, pray, we have to fix this thing. <laughs> the Bible says the body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And we have to fix it, amen, praise God. Whatever we do, amen, oh my God, when you become more and more God conscious, praise God, you will discover, praise God, the wrong things that you're doing. The simple thing, praise God, you will set this thing in right. You're not going to take it for granted. Mm -hmm. Amen? For example, you could take something from your best friend. Amen? You might go to Sister Johnson's house, Teresa, and I might take something without even asking her. I might see some peanuts on the table or whatever, praise God. I might just open the jar and take it out. But I didn't ask her. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That is a sin. Because Jesus said, ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek. And I, you can't take things for granted. Amen? Praise God. Not because I know you, praise God, I'm going to go into your house and just take some pictures they without asking you. No, you have to ask. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, Pastor, I Starbucks on my way to work. I didn't have a fork to eat. Wait, that particular day, so I went in and they got a lot of forks out there, you know, I was for the public and I went and I take one and just walk. And I feel convicted afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I feel convicted afterwards. I said, what? <laughs> I should have asked. Can I have a fork? No, we take things for granted. We said it's not a big deal. But it is. The Holy Spirit is going to convict you immediately. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. But we, God will always remain faithful to his word. Yes. Amen. And if his word says do this, do do that. We have to follow it, brother. Yes, Lord. Because that thing, that, that sin, it may look so simple, but it can lead us directly to hell. And God is a serious judge. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, to make their joy complete, he told his disciples, go to prepare a place for you. Amen? Now, praise God. Mm. So, Jesus already made preparation for our arrival there, amen, for the very first time. Amen? Jesus is waiting just for you. Now, heaven is a better place than earth. How many of you know that? Amen. But nobody don't want to die right now. <laughs> Heaven is a better place. Amen. But if you praise God, I, I, you know, I was sharing with the sister, I said, you know what, Sampa, don't even feel like being around anymore. Amen. But then I have to change. I said, God, but you need me here. Amen. Amen. Because I have to win more souls. Amen. Nobody don't want to die. And that's one of the reasons why it is important for us, amen, that in this life, amen, it's important for us to die right. Amen. Mm. amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Heaven is a place of permanent fellowship with God. 
So there is no better place than home, especially when our home is in heaven. Could you imagine the saints that are here now? They don't even have to study to pay no bills, no rent, because their next door neighbor is who? God. <laughs> Next door, you know, you know, and that is the right neighbor, amen? amen. I know, I know, honestly, that is a good neighbor to live next to, amen? amen. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah! Amen. Amen. amen, praise God, amen. amen. We live in some neighborhood and all we're in is cussing and all these kind of things, and <laughs> fighting and all of these things, you know? No. When we with our next door neighbor, there is a peace there, man. Okay. We have fellowship. That we won't even be feel the way we feel now in heaven. We won't feel that way. Huh. There is no tears. And there is no um, no depression. Praise God. Those feelings for the earth, not for heaven. Amen. What a precious promise. He said, "I go and I prepare a place for you." He said, "And I will come again and receive you unto myself." Now, just as Jesus went to heaven, so he will return from his Father's house. Amen in heaven and take us to be with him. I want to be in the first resurrection. All that, brother, let us all focus on this, amen. It's important for us to be in the first resurrection, amen. The first resurrection is the resurrection life, but the second resurrection is the resurrection of damnation. It's always good to be in the first resurrection, amen. To be absent from the body, you don't want to be present with Satan in hell. You want to be present with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Listen to this. Every day, every day, every day, repent. Because we sin consciously and we sin unconsciously. Every day, go before God. Just as you take a natural bath every day, you need a spiritual bath every day. Amen. Praise God. The reason why I'm telling you this is to keep your garment white all the time. Thank you, God. Keep your garment white. Wash it with the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Listen, praise God. We, we, we are human beings. Amen. We are spirit beings, but we live in a physical body. And the Bible says, the apostle put it this way, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, God is no good thing. That's the same nature. Amen. Praise God. We go to sleep. But then when we slip, it's good to have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will convict us immediately. Yes. This thing, you gotta, you gotta fix it right away. Yes, Don't allow sin to become our, our, a gap in our lives. Amen? Amen. Listen, we go to hatred, bitterness, <coughs> resentment, animosity, rebellion, anger, malice, unforgiveness. All of these things are stained on our garments. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why, amen, we have to confess. Whenever a little bitterness rise up, say, God, I repent. Have mercy upon amen. me. Yes, thank you, God. Amen. Praise God. It's to ensure, praise God, that your garment is clean and you are in right standing before God. Amen. 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 Yeah, my pastor, yeah, I do have feelings. Sometimes I get, I, I really get upset. Amen. Praise God. And But you know what? I have to repent immediately. Mm -hmm. I have to repent immediately. Yes. And sometimes a person prays that have caused me to be upset with them. I have to pray for them also. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, so the ultimate, what is amen? The ultimate purpose for Christ's return is that we might be with him forever. Amen? amen. Now, the thought of Jesus, amen, taking us to his Father's house in heaven, must fill us with great joy amen. and anticipation. Yes. Amen? And to compel, amen, praise God, us. I mean, I mean to compel others, amen, to accept Jesus Christ yes. as the Lord and Savior. Yes. Like I was saying, if I am not witnessing the soul, it's like I'm not doing anything for the kingdom. Yes. It's like I'm not doing anything for the kingdom at all. Amen. It seems like it praise God that I just I'm just far away. Look, yes, there was doing some work home. 
you know, on the floor, praise God, you know, me, right? I, I, always, I always like something. I always find something to do in the home, you know? Mm -hmm. Amen? And it's like, in between, you know, I usually pray. But then I was so focused on, on finishing that floor, you know, and it's like, afterwards, I feel so convicted that in between, I didn't find quality time with God. Amen. And I said, God, I gotta make this thing up, God. <laughs> I got to make it up. Amen. Mm -hmm. So from 8 o'clock last night, 8 to 8 last night, praise God, I spent a lot of time. And normally when I'm in the presence of God, I always pray, you know, between 12 and 2 o'clock. That is a good time to pray. Amen. Midnight pray. Yeah. If you want to see victory during the day, midnight pray. Amen. Midnight pray. From 12 to 1. If you could go from 12 to 2, that's better. Amen. But remember, that's where the warfare is for your life. Mm -hmm. Is midnight. Yeah. Is mid that's where the, 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 the spirit world is planning Daddy. for you. But thank God for his grace. Oh, yes. Amen. Praise the for by grace we receive. Amen. Amen. And I, I was sharing this, you know, I was sharing this with the sister the other day. Amen. Is that you know when you pray from 12 to 1 for midnight prayer and 12 to one or two or two o'clock, I'm telling you. It's a thank you, brother Ronald. It is a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. It's like that day that you feel so free for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. Amen. I think I was praying for you, brother Chris, and I indicated that to you. You're gonna see results, tangible results. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Men, get up. Praise God. Midnight. Amen. Forget about who's next to you, man. And tell him I, I'm about to do my father's business. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I think he's going to get it, right? <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm about to do my father's business. Now it's, it's time for me to spend time with my father. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So when she's sleeping, you're on your knees. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Don't let, don't let it distract you. Amen. Amen. Just let him know. About to do my father's business now. Amen. To take care of my father's business. Am I right? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Don't, allow, don't allow the flesh now to dominate that time between you and your God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, praise God. This man's fellowship that we're going to have is going to be powerful, man. Amen. And yeah, I think we're going to have to. Uh, well, the ladies are ready to. You know, they want to join with the men. <laughs> um, no. think we we, we got to think about that very carefully, brother, you know. Then I got to take three to four. You, you know, because, <laughs> <laughs> because you, you know, they want, they, 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 they want to join with motive, you know. They want to discover our secrets, you know. Right? <laughs> got to allow that to happen, bro. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Amen. I want to discover a weakness because I know that we're going to share certain <laughs> things here, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Okay, finally. Now, um, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 10, it says, Abraham looked for a city which has foundation. Amen. Whose builder and maker is God. Now, what we see here, Abraham wasn't looking for an earthly city that man built. Amen. Praise God. Abraham was looking for a city that God himself built. Amen. And prepared. Abraham serves as an example for all believers. Amen. So while we're on this earth, amen, pray that let us look. You know the false prophets, and that's one of the things I this is why I detest false prophets, because you know, they come up with a, 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 a they come up with this fatalistic philosophy, so to speak, that you're so heavenly minded and you're no earthly good. There's no truth in that. Amen. There's no scripture to verify that. Amen? The Bible says, amen, that we must seek the things above and not the things we need. Amen? amen. Praise God. And uh, when we put our priority in order, that is to seek the kingdom first. Yes. Amen? And his righteousness. He said, all these things shall be added unto us. Amen. But it's always good, amen, praise God, to seek the kingdom first and his righteousness. Yeah. And then he said, all these things to praise God, amen, material things. Yes. 
Aaron is going to add an altar. He don't even have to go searching for those things. But he said, they will, these things will follow us. They're not in front of us, but they will follow us. Amen. Because God don't want us to focus on it, but they will follow us. That's the blessing. That's the blessings. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So sometimes, you know, I mean, it's good. It, um, you know, we, you know, today, church, they focus so much on, on wealth and the people's lives is in jeopardy. It's not helping the people there. Amen. They don't know God. Amen. They, you know, they're heading towards a lost eternity. Amen. Wealth, everything, you be brought nothing into this world, and we can take nothing out of it. Amen. Praise God. I was encouraging Sister Annette um, concerning Joshua. Praise God because he's doing well, I'm told, in, in basketball. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. And he's, he's doing so well. Praise God. His father, his father, the family was there last night. Amen. To see him play sometimes. He scores 16 points sometimes. Amen. It, it, it's a special gift in his life, Amen. you know. But I was telling his mother, and she agreed with me, you know. Praise God. Amen. Don't allow this school to become idolatry in his life. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Continue to pray for him. Amen. And so forth. Praise God. But he's doing he's, he's doing well, you know, as a young kid. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But, you know, as a spiritual mother, I know she's going to do our best. Amen. Not to see sign any contract. Amen. With the devil. Amen. That's right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You sign a contract with the devil, you sign it, that the trees, the, the, uh, the moss, the bees. Amen. Hallelujah. The devil gives you wealth, he's going to find a way to take it back. Amen. He's going to give it to somebody else and get you out of the way. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Praise God. Finally, Jesus said, and I will come again and receive you unto myself. Now God had made many promises in his word. Amen. And each of these promises, um, some of them have been fulfilled. Amen. Praise God. And some, amen, praise God, has not been fulfilled as yet. Amen. But the certainty that Jesus Christ will return, amen, is one of the greatest promises of all. He will return. Yes. Amen. Although no one knew the exact day of Jesus' return, amen, we do have God promise that Jesus will return. Amen. Praise God. Jesus will come again, and he will come again when we least expected it. He will come like a thief in the night. Amen. The Bible says he will come like a thief in the night. So it's obvious, amen, praise God, that is at some point in the night, amen, praise God. Whatever the time is, he's going to come. And that's why we always have to be ready. And church, remember this. Before you go to bed, make sure, praise God, that you do some spiritual cleansing. Say, God created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit with me. God, I repent. Remove hatred from me, bitterness resentment, animosity. I don't want to die in these things because if I die in these things, I will go to hell. As simple as that. You know, because you have to remember, amen, praise God. Jesus said, and by the way, he's coming back for a perfect church. He said, when I return, it's for a church without spot or wrinkle. God, hallelujah. You, the individual, have to make sure that your life is in right standing with God. Amen. Wash yourself. Wash your garment. God, I purify my garment. I wash it with the blood of Jesus Christ. Something we use the blood only, but it's important for us to use the water. Because when the Roman soldier take the pierce and did a sword and pierce it in the side, the water and blood came out. Yes. That's, that's a revelation a lot of people didn't get, you know. So it is important for us to use the water because, because both the blood and the water speaks of purification. Amen. Amen. Amen? So it's important for us to make things right before we go to bed at night. Amen. 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 Praise God. Yes. If we don't do that, you, you can't guarantee, praise God, 
that you were to be alive in the next day. Mm -hmm. Amen. I get some terrible dreams, some nights, praise God, but thank God. So that dream has said floating. What's going on? Mm -hmm. Floating in the, in the air. I said, what's going on? Praise God. Amen. <coughs> but I thank God. Praise God. But remember, midnight prayer is extremely important. Yes. It's a wonderful thing to pray. Amen. It makes your day. What the devil was planning cannot be achieved without oh, yeah. the day. Amen? Amen. Amen. So God is good. Thank you for listening.